Hi, it's Alex. Welcome back to my sewing room. Um, first off, again, thank you very much. You guys are so good with uh, suggestions for things I could do with my fabrics uh, following from the last video. Um, you also seem to think I lead a way more glamorous life, life than I really do because um, yeah, lots of suggestions for making um, pyjamas or kind of robes out of that gorgeous silk, which would be fabulous, but I think I'd be too scared. Well, that's the reason I've not used it. I'm too scared to use it because, um, yeah, I don't lead the kind of lifestyle where I'm floating around in silk bathrobes or dressing gown, whatever you might call it. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I should just make it and... Um, yeah treat myself a bit but anyway overall you had some really really good suggestions and um it just focused my mind a little bit and made me think yeah you can sew with chiffon you've done it before um so yeah brilliant thank you very very much so i said that i was going to be making the uh, valley blouse by Cali Fay patterns out of my new Atelier Brunette fabric that I bought uh, from Lulu Designs. And I've done that now. So I'm wearing it now. Uh, let me stand up, hopefully you will see it a bit better. Um, I am very happy with it. It's quite wide at the neck, so, um, you know, bra straps are just clinging on for dear life here. Um, so it's definitely something to be aware of. I possibly could size down, well, I could size down, but I think the kind of drapiness and the looseness of it is kind of what it's all about anyway. So, um, yeah, maybe I'd go down the size. I'm not sure. It kind of doesn't really seem massively important and the neckline sits really well actually so maybe it is um as good an idea to stay with this size this size um but i have to say that it's um i'm in two minds about this pattern i very much like how it turned out i haven't used this pattern company before and it is another indie company and I think if you've seen any of my videos before now, you'll know that I love the idea of supporting female-led companies and people that have kind of, you know, not just sat around like we're all inclined to do and say, I could do that. People have actually just got up their backsides and done it and put themselves out there. So I'm really all for supporting people. Um, but I have to say, I was disappointed with this, so the main reasons to be honest for the disappointment are to do with the instructions and not so much to do with the final outcome. It is very well drafted, it seems to suit, fit my body, you know the shoulders are where they should be and all of that kind of thing and I really like the design. I think it's very versatile. I'm wearing it today with shorts. I've realised I don't have any shorts that I've made so that is definitely something I'm going to do soon. I think with shorts for this time of year it's you know great and I'll also wear it um, on days where it's not quite as warm you know like with jeans or trousers or whatever so really really like the um, final outcome but yeah not so much the instructions. In terms of the fabric itself it was an absolute joy um, as per usual with Atelier Brunette um, the viscose, I mean obviously it's a viscose, it's drapey, it's going to be a little bit slippery, it's certainly not like sewing with cotton, but even so it was really really nice to sew with. Um, it didn't pull at all, which I sometimes find with viscose. Um, yeah, it's it's great and it's just not as tricky as a lot of viscose fabrics can be and to wear it's, yeah, it's so nice to wear, it's lovely. Um, the fabric requirements had me down for 1.75 meters and i ordered a meter and a half thinking that i could squeeze it in and i did manage to um the only thing i had to do in order to squeeze it in was the um back facing piece um which should have been cut on the fold i ended up cutting it into two sections adding a little bit for seam allowance and uh, you know sewing that together in the middle but yeah I thought that was quite a good compromise um, but in general 
I would say that these instructions are lacking clarity. Um, I think some of that is down to the diagrams. I think there should be more diagrams. There's no line drawing of the finished item, which I think it needs because um, if you're struggling to understand what the instructions are saying or struggling to understand why they're doing something a certain way, it's really useful to be able to see a really good clear um, line drawing of the finished item and there isn't one. Um, there's just photographs and the photographs are lovely, I mean they look great but you know not as useful. And I found the whole treatment of the bodice part of it a little bit unsatisfactory. Partly because also it'd be really useful if uh, patent companies used similar te terminology. Uh, what most people would call a facing was referred to in this as a liner. Um, and I think if you're somebody who's perhaps not as experienced, who wants to understand what they're doing and perhaps go and Google some alternative methods, um, it's useful to have the sort of common terminology. So calling it facing would have been better rather than a liner, uh, referring to understitching rather than, I think it was called top stitching the liner would have been better to call it understitching. Those are just niggles really, but they just didn't add uh, or they didn't help with the clarity of it all. And I think possibly the easiest way to show you what I mean is to probably take this off. Well, that's interesting. In taking the top off, I've realized that I hadn't actually overlocked the um, sleeve seams. Look, they're still raw. So <laughs> when we finish this, I'll go and do that, but it's not relevant to what we're talking about here. So here is um, the bodice. Um, with the facing. So that works really well. You've got a nice clean edge uh, both here where you've got your gathers but also nice clean edge along here. Perfect. Um, but then you have, rather than having the full back bodice as a lining piece or as a inside facing piece, you just have a facing. Uh, so yeah referred to as the liner. And um, the diagrams don't show it as this kind of a facing piece. It really isn't clear at all. And I was looking at the diagram for the lay plan and I could see a facing piece, a, you know, a thin facing piece, and it was listed under the pattern pieces. So I was like, yes, I'm definitely doing the right thing. Um, but on the actual diagrams for constructing it, it didn't look at all like a thin facing piece. It looked like the full bodice. So I went onto the, my computer and had a little Google to see if anyone else had reviewed this and found that in fact on the Calife website are some tutorials and there is a tutorial for putting the bodice together. Um, and that is way clearer and that does show photographs of a facing piece that looks pretty much like that without the centre seam. Can you see the centre seam? There's the centre seam that I did in order to squeeze it out of the fabric. Okay, there's a tutorial there, but I feel like it shouldn't be necessary to have a tutorial, a separate tutorial on the website to show something that really is as relatively simple as putting the bodice together. So that's not great. I also think that being as your front piece has got everything so nice and neatly enclosed, you might as well do the same with the back piece so that you haven't got the raw edge of the gathering here. I mean, not raw as in I've, I have remembered to overlock it, um, but it would look so much neater if that was enclosed as well. And also if you are using a more um, translucent fabric, which this pattern would be great for, then even more reason to do that because if you can see through it or you can see through it in any way, it'd be so much nicer to have that all enclosed rather than just having a facing piece sort of flapping around like this does. So I wasn't too impressed with that and I wasn't too impressed with the fact that I had to go and find that to just be reassured that I was doing the right thing. And then my other issue around it was around the keyhole. Now 
The keyhole is bound and again that's referred to as a keyhole liner. Um, when I looked at it, it was on the lay plan um, with a straight grain. The pattern piece itself doesn't have any grain line on it so it went back to the lay plan expecting it to be on the bias but it wasn't. So again I thought okay follow the instructions and when it came to turning the binding over you've got obviously a very sharp round or you know very deep curve there on a keyhole lining and it obviously it just wouldn't lay flat I just couldn't get it to look neat at all. So I'd found the tutorial section by now I went back to see if there was a tutorial on it and there was and they only turn it over once so you've got the raw edge of the fabric still kind of outwards and I thought that can't be right so I tried to turn that under and I just could not get it to sit flat for love nor money so in the end I just unpicked it and managed you know had enough fabric to cut another piece on the bias put that on and it was all absolutely beautiful and flat as can be I think I did take a photo of it so I would say forget faffing around with putting it on the straight grain just cut it on the bias and make it a lot neater um, so I did that but then when I actually finished the thing and put it on it was only when I went downstairs and my daughter burst out laughing that I realised why in the instructions it says that you don't have to make the keyhole because if you imagine it there this section here is kind of sitting above the bust and the keyhole goes right down to kind of bottom of where your the band of your bra is so basically I was doing some weird boob flashing at the entire world I've had to stitch the keyhole up because yeah there's no point flashing boobs at everybody um, so it means that it's um, yeah I've just sort of stitched it up it means that it's sitting in a slightly odd way on the front um, and to be honest it's just completely unnecessary so if you were going to make this I'd just say forget the keyhole don't bother with that because it's way too low um, maybe if I was somebody with a bigger bust I would have thought to look out for it but it's just not normally really an issue for me although there are sleeve notches on the sleeve itself there were no sleeve notches to correspond with those on the bodice pieces which meant that um, trying to and there was a lot of ease trying to ease it all in and make sure that it kind of hangs correctly was really difficult um, and I'll be honest I could have I could have done it and I could have sat there with it uh, for ages with pins easing it all in but I decided not to I actually decided to put gathers on the sleeve head um, and that's another reason why a line drawing would have been really helpful because I was doing that thing you know I'm peering at the photographs to see have I got that wrong? Are there supposed to be gathers on the sleeve? And I've just misunderstood it? Not really sure. So anyway, I think actually gathers on the sleeve um, work quite well because you've got the gathers on the bodice anyway. So overall, I feel a bit disappointed by this. Um, in fact, if I'm honest, I was in two minds about whether I ought to come on and talk about it. And it's only because um, I had said that this is what I was going to be doing as my next project that I thought you know I ought to come back and be upfront and be honest with you because I'd love to be able to come on and say this is a fabulous design and the instructions are great let's all go support this indie pattern designer and I'm not saying that you shouldn't make it I think the outcome is great it's a really really nice design but what I am saying is if you're somebody that hasn't made anything similar to it before then kind of take your time and you know make sure that you're really clear on what it is that you're supposed to be doing um, the instructions just do need to be a little clearer and I would say don't bother with using a facing piece on the back and do a full bodice lining it will just look neater especially as I said if you've got something um, that's semi-transparent. I don't feel massively comfortable saying anything overly negative about somebody that is an independent designer 
who is sticking their neck out there and doing way better than I am. I'm not sticking my neck out, you know, putting patterns out there. So I do feel bad about it, but I feel I've got to be honest and say, just needs a little bit more work on the instructions. But overall, the finished thing, I'm really happy with. In the meantime, I'm gonna be sticking to Me Made May. We must only have less than a week left. Um, I've stuck to it apart from those shorts and I have got a bit of thinking to do about which shorts pattern to make. Um, I had some great suggestions on Instagram. Um, the Megan, F Megan Flint, Megan Nielsen Flint uh, trousers and shorts and the uh, closet case Pietra pants came up. Um, but obviously I do already have patterns that I can use. So I probably, as much as I'm tempted to go and buy a new pattern, probably should use something I've already got. So I just need to have a think about what I'm gonna do next. But I will be back soon. And um, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for all your brilliant suggestions and comments. And oh, before I go, my husband has now put, I wonder if you can see it. I've now got shelves in here. So um, yeah. Once again, thanks for that suggestion. It was great. Okay, see you soon. Bye.